Okay, we're getting ready to do our Cell Transportation Lab 3.05. I have my lab report printed out and ready to fill in. I have um, a ribbon for measuring. I didn't have string, so a ribbon will work fine. I have a ruler with metric units of measure on it. I have centimeters, which is important in science. I have an egg. I have a wide mouth cup. I have some vinegar and I have some corn syrup, which is just like liquid sugar. So um, the first thing we need to do is after we've read through the lesson and read through the lab report is make a hypothesis. Remember this is going to be showing an example of osmosis, which is a specific type of diffusion. Now, um, first of all, we're going to pour vinegar over the egg after we measure it, take an initial measurement, and all that's going to do is dissolve the shell. So at that point, the shell will be removed and we'll have simply the cell membrane left, okay, the membrane of the egg, which is a really good example of a cell. And then we're going to pour the vinegar off and fill the cup with water. And that's going to be then a very high concentration of water in that cup. And we're going to hypothesize what's going to happen um, to the egg. So if that cell membrane allows molecules to move in and out of it, and we know that diffusion and osmosis specifically in this case is molecules moving from a high concentration to a low concentration, then you need to hypothesize what's going to happen to the egg. Okay, so make your hypothesis and um, let's take a measurement of the egg and let's get started. So I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna set this down and hopefully this will work. Set this down and I'm gonna take a measurement of the egg itself. So the easiest way to do this, since it is a round egg, is to just go around it with a ribbon. I'm going to pinch right there, and then I'm going to lay it down on my metric ruler, lining it up, and I've got a measurement of 14 centimeters exactly. Okay, so put down your 14 centimeters, <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and put the egg in the cup and I'm going to pour vinegar over it <clears throat> just to cover the egg. It might float a little bit but as long as it's covered with vinegar that's going to be fine. And then that egg, this takes about 12 to 24 hours for the shell to dissolve. So we'll come back at that point and uh, we'll take another measurement and fill the cup with, replace the cup with water. Okay. Okay, we are back after about, let's see, it's been 15 hours and the shell has dissolved. So um, we're gonna go ahead and take a measurement and then we're gonna go ahead and replace this with um, water. Now if you take a look at it, you can see the vinegar has dissolved the shell. You can see all of that scum looking stuff on top is actually part of the shell. So um, because vinegar is an acid and the shell is made of calcium carbonate, it actually eats away at the shell. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this off first and then we're going to take a measurement. Okay, I'm going to be pretty careful because remember this is not a hard boiled egg. So um, this is simply the cell membrane and it will break if we're not careful. Now the egg has definitely gotten bigger. It's taken in some of the water already from the vinegar. So very carefully I'm pinching, taking a measurement and we've got 15 centimeters right now. Okay, so I'm going to write down 15 centimeters on my chart. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and fill this now with just plain tap water. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. Very carefully place that in there. Okay. Oops. And now we're going to wait another 24 hours and take another measurement. Okay, we're back after 48 hours now. So let's take a look at the egg. We're going to do two observations. Uh, you can see it's gotten quite a bit bigger. Uh, it's a little opaque now. It's not quite as white. You can see through that cell membrane a little bit. And it's very firm to touch. If you were here, you're going to have to get a virtual touch. So, <laughs> But it's very firm, kind of like a water balloon. And we're going to take a measurement. So I'm going to put my string around and get just the right spot. Remember we're always measuring in centimeters and we are right at 16 centimeters. So 16 centimeters after 48 hours. Um, opaque, that means kind of see-through and very firm to touch. Those are your observations. All right. All right. We are back now after 72 hours. And yeah, we're definitely getting bigger here. It's, I think, even a little more opaque than it was before. Uh, still very firm. So let's take a measurement. And let's get that right there. Drop that back. And we are now at just under 17 centimeters. We're going to call it 17 centimeters. Okay, so 17 centimeters after 72 hours. Um, I think a, a little more transparent and still very firm. All right, we'll do the optional, put it into... Um, Kara syrup, which is a light corn syrup now. So I'm just going to dump off the water because we're now done with the water. And we're going to, let me wash my hands. <clears throat> Always wash your hands after you work with the egg. It is a raw egg, and chances of salmonella are there. So you haven't done the virus. I mean the bacteria part of um, the class yet, but salmonella is nasty. So we're just going to cover this with corn syrup. This is basically like a liquid sugar. And we're going to see what happens after this. So I'll see you back in 24 hours. Alright, we're back after another 24 hours. Remember we put the egg into the corn syrup from the water. Now. This means that the egg had a high concentration of water inside of it and it went into something that was a low concentration of water. So if you want to take a look here, you can also see how watery the corn syrup is. Remember how thick it was before? And, whoa, what happened to the egg? Deflated. So all of that water that was inside, hmm, where did it go? So let's do a quick measurement here. Nastiness. And we are down to 12. Wow. Ah, let's make sure that's correct. 12 centimeters. So we went from 17 centimeters to 12 centimeters. And that is the end of our experiment. You should be able to draw conclusions from that. Remember how uh, plump the egg was? Think about that when you think about a plant cell and how that plant cell might plump up the same way as you answer that question about how this would affect plant cells as well. Okay.